And Jeff, we want to welcome back Lieutenant Governor Kathy Hochul joining us live tonight. Thanks so much for being here again. We appreciate it. Thanks, Mayor. All right, Lieutenant Governor, our county executive sounding very confident, saying we have checked all the boxes here, ready to restart with phase one, gradually recover our economy starting May 15th when the governor's shutdown policy expires. Yet the governor says we're not quite there yet. There's a need to increase testing capacity, employ more contact tracers. What are your thoughts? Will the state modify those requirements based on where we're at here in Onondaga County? We're going to get that green light on May 15th? Well, that's 10, 10 days from now, so we have time to reach that benchmark. And what is spoken about, I think, are the numbers with respect to hospitalizations and ICU capacity, number of beds, and that's all very important. But another metric is also how we're going to have upscale the testing so more people can be determined if they do carry the virus. A lot of people don't even know they're carriers, and that's how it's spreading. But the other component is to make sure that we have people who will do the contact tracing. Those are individuals, if someone tests positive, immediately find out who you've been in contact and alert them that they need to quarantine for two weeks. So it's a, it's a bigger process than just looking at the day-to-day -day numbers, but certainly this Onondaga, Syracuse area, this region, they're doing very well in terms of having a decline in numbers, but that's not the only benchmark, but we're optimistic. You know, we hope that this region can reopen for the first phase. And again, this is not a complete reopening. This is talking about a small opening, a crack into the economy to allow manufacturing, construction work, and certain retail that can have curbside pickup. That's all we're talking about. Then we're gonna monitor for two weeks and see whether or not we're in a good position to go to the next phase. I think we like to hear that, uh, that word you're using, optimistic. We're also hearing from salon and restaurant owners. They are, they're nervous they're not gonna survive. They're scared of losing their livelihoods. And salon owners have contacted us ar arguing that they can go ahead and operate in a safe manner, safer than one owner even said than a grocery store. So let's say they submit plans for taking limited customers. What phase can they be in? And, and what can you tell these owners who are very nervous tonight? As we're looking out on this date, again, this is evolving constantly because this is uncharted territory for us. We've never had a manage a shutdown of a state nor a gradual re reopening. Phase one is definitely set with respect to construction, manufacturing, some retail. Phase two is looking at professional services. Ideally, we're looking at office work that can still, still be done at home, much of it, real estate, financial services, insurance. And the next phase is probably the one where we'd have those personal services. But listen, we're willing to listen to people, show us the plans that you have, and we, you know, we're gonna come up and make sure there's protocols. But what could also happen to restaurants and salons, they open too early, they won't have any customers. I mean, that is what is driving this as well as people are saying, I'm not feeling confident. If, if I'm hearing from my government that it's not safe to open, I don't really want to venture out and, and spend the trust of the public in our recommendations they've adhered to is the reason why we don't have such a high spike in numbers. And so, so people have to understand, consumer and customer confidence is going to play into this. And there is a strong sentiment. They want to make sure that we get this right, as do we. So we can't go a second too early and jeopardize people's health. All right, let's uh, tackle one more topic, education. School buildings closed for the remainder of the academic year. So we got that question answered. What about summer? Is there going to be some form of education during the summer months? Is it safe for us to go ahead and explore summer camps for our kids? I know Jeff's kids are probably looking at some soccer camps. My daughter's eyeing a hockey camp. Can we go ahead and make those kind of plans? Right now, it's tough to say to go ahead with those plans. And first of all, I want to point out that today is National Teacher Recognition Day. And boy, these teachers, if we didn't appreciate them before, I think every parent who's been watching the teachers try to teach their children in a completely different environment in their homes, how to keep these children focused. So we have gone through this experiment known as distance learning, and we've done the very best we can into parents and teachers who struggle and the students. They're doing absolutely phenomenal under the circumstances, but it is too early for us to tell what the summer is going to look like. This virus is very unpredictable, but the governor has said by the end of May, he'll give some direction on where we think we'll be in terms of summer camps and summer schooling. And so if we can all hold on just a little bit longer, that information will be forthcoming in a matter of weeks. All right, Lieutenant Governor Kathy Hochul, we appreciate you being here tonight. And please keep us updated. Thank you. Thank you very much.